Welcome to Across the Goal Line, a sports podcast provided by diehard fans, Luke Goddard, and Corey Maines. And today, we're going to get into our Super Bowl preview, Super Bowl 51, yeah. is this Sunday. <clears throat> uh, and we're in for a good game, I'm sure. Uh, hopefully. Yeah, but also we're going to get into the NHL All-Star game, and it's weekend right now. Uh, All-Star weekend had a skills competition on Saturday, and it pitted the four divisions against each other. And basically, I think it was just bragging rights, mostly. Yeah. Um, but the Atlantic Division out of the East, they won that skills competition thanks to winning the shootout competition at the very end against the Central, 4-1. to one. Uh, They got there thanks to winning the hardest shot competition, partly. They won that one with Shea Weber from the Montreal Canadiens, shooting a shot of 102.8 miles per hour. Wow. Second was actually Patrick Liney, the rookie from Winnipeg. At, he got into triple digits himself. Wow. So, yeah. I know we amazing. talked about it last year when we first started. Uh, I kept going on and on about you know, it's pretty impressive how fast these pucks can, you know, fly, yeah. you know, for uh, uh, miles per hour wise. Uh, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, it was actually a record set in the skills competition as well for fastest skaters, won by the Pacific's Connor McDavid, MVP candidate that we talked about last week. Yeah. He went, it was a, you gotta go around the entire rink, 13.02 seconds, beating Dylan Larkin's record from last year. That's pretty damn fast, if you ask me. Yes, and um, that's part of the reason why he's just so good. He has the speed yeah. and the ability to yeah. make plays and do really well, so hey. Uh, then the All Star game. More power too. Yeah, the All Star game has had a change here in recent years. Uh, I think made it more exciting. Going it does. Three on does. three format, uh, similar to the overtime rules now, where they have three yeah. on three. Um, both uh, the divisions pitted against each other first in the East and then the West, and then the two winners of those two games play each other in the finals. And I think it makes it a little bit more exciting, and it makes the high scoring almost justified. I think because there's more space out there, you're more liable to actually score. It's a lot sadder when it's like nine eight and there's five on five out there. Yeah, that is pretty sad. I mean, I I turned it on there for a little bit, but um, obviously the Royal Rumble was on Sunday, so I was watching that because the pre-show started at five o'clock there, uh, and the All Star game was still on at that time. So uh, I mean, some people will say you know it's not really fun to watch, you know, when it's like that. Uh, you know, I've said that in the past about stuff, but. You know, some sometimes I will keep it on if there's nothing else on. But as I said, the Royal Rumble was on, so I ended up watching that. Yeah, I think everybody did. It was that was a great show. We'll get to that here later on. Yeah, and the semifinals, the Metropolitan Division defeated the Atlantic ten to six. High scoring game. Both of these were yeah. basically both kind of blowouts. And then the and the West side of things, the Central lost to the Pacific ten to three. So those were high scoring. But then the final game, the finals was actually a really exciting game. Uh, it went four to three. The Metropolitan win four to three. Game winning goal by Wayne Simmons, his third of the day, with about five minutes remaining. He actually wins the MVP. Yeah, and I'm sure you're probably happy about that. He plays for Philadelphia Flyers. Yeah, uh, you know, just uh, makes people pay more attention to them. Hopefully, you know, coming up and him He's and been... and him especially. Yeah, uh, um, you know, with winning the MVP, maybe you know he turns uh, turns the Flyers uh, season around, and maybe they make a better push, a bigger push for the playoffs. You know, we talked about it last week. Uh, you know, they weren't doing so hot there. They had a losing skid. Uh, but uh, maybe he can uh, turn the Flyers around. I know we've got a big game coming up here at the end of the month already. Uh, it's already February. February 25th at Heinz Field, they got the Penguins Flyers uh, in the stadium series. Uh, should be one hell of a game. Um, but we'll have to see. I mean, uh, going back to Simmons, you know, it just, it's going to put more pressure on him. going to put... You know, he's one hell of a player. Uh, maybe he even, with this, as I said, helps turn turns the Flyers season around. And maybe he, you know, uh, with doing that, puts himself into the MVP conversation for the whole season, just not for this All-Star game. Well, I'm not sure about the MVP conversation. He's more of a goal scorer than anything else because he just parks in front of the net mostly. That's his main job yeah. down low. And he does it effectively for sure. But he's been consistently getting better, it seems, on the goal front every single year. 20-plus goals now, even getting reaching 30 here, I think, last season it was. Yeah. And now this year, obviously, he's on pace to get about 30, even more than that, this season as well. So he's consistently been one of the best players on the Flyers, especially on the power play. Because, like I said, yeah. parking in front of the net, that's a huge part of the power play for us. Getting in front, deflecting shots, screening the goaltender, and he does it better than anyone else. Also, him being an enforcer for the team almost. No one wants to fight Wayne Simmons in the no. NHL. He's probably one of the best fighters in the NHL, despite rarely fighting, honestly. Yeah. But when he does, he throws down. So yeah, and I mean, when I think of the Flyers, he's one of the first guys I think of. Um, you know, because he's that good. Uh, and other teams, they you know they need to uh, 
keep their eye on him because uh, if they don't, he's going to hurt you in the end. Yeah, he's that, he's that rare combination, I think, of he's a playmaker, yet he's also kind of the enforcer of the powerhouse yeah. of the team as well. So, yeah, definitely, hopefully. Also, another wrinkle to that is that it was in Los Angeles where he originally started his career. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, the All-Star game was in Los Angeles, returned home. Uh, I knew I knew the game was in L.A. I didn't know he was from L.A., though. No, he's not from L.A. He's from Canada, well, but he started his NHL career in Los Angeles for the Kings. What did he say? Before being traded what he said. That's what I didn't know. to the Flyers here. So, nevertheless, good on Wayne Simmons. Pretty happy for him in the end. Now, uh, Super Bowl. Well, I'm just excited today's National Signing Day. I mean, uh, you got the stars of tomorrow signing their National Honor tent at this very moment. Uh, so go over to, go over to ESPN watch, when you're done watching us and uh, check out all their coverage. Um, you know, because who knows, kid that's signing today, he might be making a play for your team as soon as next year. Uh, and then he, these guys, they might be playing in the NFL in three or four years. Julio Jones going to the Falcons, going to the Super Bowl. Uh, he signed his national letter of intent to go play at Alabama in 2008. Played there for three years. First round pick for the Atlanta Falcons. Number one wide receiver for him. You know, it gave Matt Ryan that weapon that he has. They've obviously got more weapons since then. Um, and now they're playing in the Super Bowl. So uh, you just don't know how good these kids are going to be. Sometimes these two, these one-star, two-star, three-star guys, you know, they're, um, you know, they're not really highly recruited. Uh, but then they're, they're the playmakers when it comes down to it in a big game. Uh, and then sometimes your four- or five-star guys – They'll do that as well, but at the same time, they might be, you know, riding the bench their whole career if they get hurt, or if they do go to the NFL, they might be a bust. Look at Jamarcus Russell. And, you know, that's how he was. He was number one overall pick by the Raiders. He played, what, for three years? And he hasn't played since. Um, but, uh, yeah, today's National uh, National Signing Day, so go check out all the coverage over on ESPN once you're done watching us. And uh, shout out to Ryan Lezer. He did commit to... Uh, Youngstown State, but uh, he decommitted. He got offered by Western Michigan. Uh, so now he's going up to Kalamazoo to go play for Western Michigan Broncos. So congrats to Little Lezer, and um, let's move on to Super Bowl now. Yeah, Super Bowl 51 going to be in Houston here this Sunday, yeah. 6.30-ish. It never starts on time. Uh, it's, when probably, they it's, it's probably going to be about 6.42, Six. I bet. I, that's, that's my prediction for the start time. Yeah, <laughs> prediction for the start time. <laughs> you want to you give your take on prediction for the start time? <laughs> start time, uh, quarter till 7, because okay. these things never start when they say, obviously. No, I mean, because you always, you always got the national anthem. It's going to be sang by Luke Bryan. Um you got the coin toss. There's always going to be the start. Yeah, make a big presentation of that. Too. For uh, both teams are going to have former players on the field. There's uh, you know going to be uh, all these celebrities in the stands. Yeah, the camera is going to be on them. Fox is going to have the camera on them. Uh, there's going to be interviews uh, on the sideline. You got Aaron Andrews and Chris Myers. Um, you know, doing all that for them. So yeah. As you said, it never starts on time. So my prediction is it's going to start 6.42. Yeah, I need an over-under for it. <laughs> over-under 10-minute delay from 6.30. Uh, cool. But, yeah. Uh, I know we kind of went... I did a brief like kind of preview of it last week, kind of going through the teams. Yeah. I, did, I have a more in-depth one now uh, for both teams. I want to kind of go through both teams right. at first. And I have some questions about both teams that I feel like that don't necessarily need answers. They're more going to be answered in the game, yeah. the more questions about the game, what will happen. But, yeah, I'm going to run through these teams, try to do this. I'll start with the Patriots first because that's just, I mean, that's how I run down. So, yeah, Patriots yeah, first. You got the two best teams left. Yeah, we'll start with, I mean, you got to start with Tom Brady first and foremost. Yeah. Uh, six, seventh Super Bowl appearance here. Uh, he's already had six. Four and two in those appearances. Undefeated against teams not named the New York Giants. Yep. Uh, so, he has the four rings. He has the experience factor, of course, he coming into this game. Matt Ryan's playing in his first Super Bowl. Yeah, and yeah, I'll get into that when I get to the Falcons, but I'm starting with the Patriots, of course. Uh, that's the thing about the Patriots. Tom Brady is really their only star player, and you, know, you can't. There's some like Gronk though. He's not yeah. playing, of course. Yeah, but he's, he's the yeah, only he other. I, I agree with that because with all the other uh, guys that they have, you know, they just don't compare to Brady. Yeah, and and they have, but they have this offense that I'm dubbing almost a Swiss Army off Swiss Army knife <coughs> offense. That's what of. a lot of people are saying. Because they just have so many guys that can hurt you, possibly. In yeah, they're not like Some big, of it's thanks to Tom Brady. They're not so. big playmakers. They're just, you know, they're team players that, you know, they'll get the job done in the end. Yeah, you think about, they have about six or seven guys that they could go to and make a play in this game, possibly. You and, got 
three different running backs. Look, Eric Blunt's primarily the rusher, but yeah. also James White and Deion Lewis out of the backfield. Lewis in the special teams game as well. We yeah. saw in Houston, uh, or against Houston, not in Houston, but... Uh, and then obviously the wide outs, those three guys, Amendola, Edelman, and Hogan last week, yeah. the, or two weeks ago against the Steelers now. Yeah, Chris uh, Hogan played with lacrosse at Penn State, lacrosse, uh, and then he went on to play uh, one year of football at Monmouth, um, and then he, you know, he played for the, played for the Bills there, he did make, make some plays for them, got cut by the Dolphins, and now he's, you know, having a good, great year with the New England Patriots. Yeah, and then we talked about Gronk. His backup, Martellus Bennett, is certainly a serviceable guy. Yeah. A, a tight end number one in most teams. Yeah. But on the Patriots, he's technically a tight end number two. Not really a bad option, I would have to say. No. Uh, definitely a valuable Because he, he was the number one guy when he was in Chicago. Yeah, he'd be in the number one pretty much anywhere. Well, Dallas, he backed up Witten there for a little bit. But he was the number one guy with the Giants as well when he played for them. He's almost he's the number one guy almost anywhere yeah. in the league. So. Definitely not a bad option for Tom Brady on no. tight end spot. And this goes back, as you said, they got that like Swiss Army knife like offense this year. Going back years prior, when they played the Giants in '46, they had both the, they had those two tight ends. They had Gronk, and then they had Aaron Hernandez, who's currently in prison. Um, going back to '36, '38, and '39, they had those defenses. They had those good wide receivers. You know, with uh, Branch and, um, oh, who was the other guy? Um, We'll just leave it with Dion Branch at the moment. And then, um, you know, two years ago, I mean, they they had more playmakers then because, well, Gronk wasn't hurt. Their defense, they had some some more guys, but these guys um, that are on this team, there's only about 20 of them, but the guys that are left... They have experience in these games. Going back to you said what you said about experience, um, and I said Matt Ryan doesn't have that. A lot of these Falcons players don't have that either. Um, well, because a lot of these players that are on both the Falcons and the Patriots, they played for the Cleveland Browns for God's sakes. Uh, so uh, with the Browns not winning, not going in the playoffs, you know the, the, these players don't have the experience. It should be a good game, but I mean. Who knows how these players are going to live up to the hype. Yeah, and talking about the offense, a big uh, characteristic of the offense, I have to say, at least in the passing game, quick short throws by the Patriots. They like yeah. to pass the ball very quickly, get little chunks of yardage, and kind of eat up clock by passing. I think I said it during the AFC Championship game that the Patriots can run out the clock just by throwing it. Almost. Oh, for sure. They don't have to actually run the ball because they just make these little slants and little outs that just pick up chunks of yardage and yeah. get first downs consistently and that's a big thing where uh, when I get into how I pick and it, that's one of the reasons why I think that the Patriots might be able to win this game it's a key to a win I think the quick short throws being able to counteract the Falcons pass rush well I mean it's typical Belichick for you and it's typical Belichick with the players he doesn't need all these playmakers you know yeah. and uh, you know they'll they get whoever from some team or they draft them in the sixth round they don't have to pay him twenty million dollars a year for his rookie contract. They only have to pay him less than a million, uh, you know. So they save cap space. But those quick short passes, would you rather have a you know third and long, or would you rather rather have a third and short? You know, if you throw on both first and second down for the short passes, and then you can uh, you know run it with either Blunt Lewis or you know James White there, um, you know, in that third third and short situation. But if you you know you're third and long, you're putting more uh, pressure on Brady and your, and your offensive line, and you know having uh, him to make plays to the wide receivers. Yeah, but the, th- the thing that's kind of funny about this, you're talking about the Patriots, and actually some of the media has been focused more on the defense because yeah, they are yeah. the number one scoring defense in the NFL. Only the best run up defense. Fifteen points. Yeah, yeah, they have the best run defense in the NFL. It's because they have a, a way of taking away. Uh, not just the running backs through the run defense, but yeah. also taking away a team's best wide receiver. Yeah, and we saw it uh, in the championship game against Brown. Brown only really got anything going against the zone. When it was man, he was double covered. There was no way Roethlisberger was able to get the ball to him. So yeah. that's just again typical Belichick. He likes isolating yeah. one of your best players, taking him out, and forcing you to make plays and win the game with not your stars. Yeah, but Atlanta also has you know two other wide receivers and Sanu and Gabriel. Gabriel just played for the Browns this year. They cut him uh, right after the right after uh, training camp. 
and then you go to the Falcons too. They got their running backs, you know, with uh, Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman. Uh, and you talk about the Patriots defense. You know, if you can't, if you stop the, uh, if you stop Julio Jones, their number one wide receiver, you got to be able to stop the run there too. So something's got to give. Well, they're able to do it both, both ways, is the thing. It's a Super Bowl though, so you got the two best teams left. Uh, so something, something's got to give uh, eventually. Uh, also with the defense, the reason that they're so good is that they're so technically sound. They're a defense that doesn't really have any egos. It goes back to that star power thing. There's no real big egos on that defense. They know their job, and they do their job that they're told. Yeah. They don't try to make any hero plays. They do what they're told in the play, and they just get it done. Also, another thing, tackling. They're probably one of the best tackling teams in the NFL because they gang tackle. Yeah, Gang tackling. Guy gets the ball. You got seven, eight guys converging to the ball, making the play. Don't give him, Not giving up that big play which is a big reason why the Falcons are so good. They're mm-hmm. able to make these big plays. You saw in the title game against the Packers, Julio Jones having a huge catch. Yeah. So that tackling factor helps. It doesn't make the – you're not allowed to have big plays. And also you can also get some third down stops even, not allowing them to get across that yeah. yard line that they need or whatever. So, I mean, that's all I have for the Patriots. I don't know if you want to add anything to the Patriots before I get to the Falcons. I mean, I, I mean, I went back and forth there with the Falcons and Patriots, so just move on. All right. I mean, I agree. Move on to Falcons. I mean, I agree with you with what some of the stuff you said, but uh, I think I gave my uh, two cents for that. All right. And we'll start with the quarterback for the Falcons as well, Matt Ryan. Like you said, first Super Bowl appearance, second in franchise history, for crying out loud. Yeah, it's been 18 years. Uh, The Falcons in general have... 18 years to the day yesterday, actually. Yeah, Falcons actually have the inexperience as a whole, because pretty much everybody, if not everyone on this team, has never been to a Super Bowl before. Yeah, that's what I just said with the big game. Yeah, but Matt Ryan... MVP of the season. It's not official yet, but I think we can all agree I, on that. I think it will be Saturday night. Yeah, I think we can all agree he will probably be that. Two great playoff games, though, already in this postseason uh, against some Super Bowl champions and Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson, those yeah. two Seahawks and Packers, throwing for over 300, even 400 yards, and multiple touchdowns against both of those opponents, yeah. putting up huge numbers against both of them. Pretty impressive, I would have to say. And I, I think it was either three or four straight playoff games he's had those numbers going back to last year. Go going, going back to the last time they were in the playoffs. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, he's been playing pretty well in the playoffs lately. He'll, maybe that'll carry over into the Super Bowl. Who knows? They have the number hopefully. One, hopefully they have, it will. They have the number one scoring offense to combat that number one Patriots yeah. defense. So, we're having that matchup again. As I said, something's got to give. you got the number one offense going up against the number one defense. Yeah, they have all the talent in the world. I mean, you kind of mentioned it already. The two-headed running back system yeah. with Freeman and Coleman. And, of course, Julio Jones. And, of course, that kind of goes back to what I said about the Patriots taking away those type of players, yeah. the run game, and the best wide receiver. That might be a little bit of a problem there. I mean, uh, Jones hasn't practiced lately. People are saying he's hurt. He'll play Sunday. You know, yeah, it's a Super Bowl for God's sakes. I mean, I don't think anybody, if you, even if you're on the injury report, you're going to play. Unless you're severely unable to play. Well, yeah, that's different. Yes. But the, the little wrinkle about that. That would be back funny, system. though, if, like, you know, guy broke his neck five, yeah. five weeks ago and, you know, he's suiting up and playing in the Super Bowl. Yeah, but that one wrinkle about that, that stopping the running game of the Falcons is that you got to stop the passing game. With the running backs, because both the running backs are also pass catchers as well. Yeah, they are. And they do it effectively, and that's a big part of the Falcons' offense as well. Yeah, they run those screens. Yeah, they're really effective at running the screen plays, getting big plays off of that. So, yeah, but, but a bunch of combatants going on in this game, I have to say, Yeah, uh, on both sides of the ball. Uh, and then also, they have the fewest giveaways in the NFL. They don't make too many mistakes. Again, the title game, though, they did make a couple mistakes. The, cap- the Packers were unable to capitalize on yeah. them. There was multiple dropped interceptions in that game by the Packers. A couple of fumbles that they weren't able to pounce on, the Packers were. And they also forced some takeaways as well. They did. That the Falcons do on defense. And their defense is the thing that's kind of underrated almost. Yeah. Obviously, the, the offense gets most of the credit and most of the uh, talking time about the Falcons. Yeah. But their defense is not too bad either. Yeah. Of course. And defense wins championships. And I think the key to the game is if Atlanta's defense can... St- I mean, if New England's defense can stop... Atlanta's high-powered offense, New England's going to win. But um, if Atlanta's offense is too much, New England's going to have a rough time, and Brady's going to have to you know, uh, put that Hall of Fame resume on the line. He's obviously still going to be inducted to the Hall of Fame, but he's going to have to put it on the line and you know, try to come back if, if they're in that situation. 
Yeah. Um, then talking about the defense of the Falcons, big hitters in that. Some have pointed the Legion of Boom to point out. Yeah. Thanks to Dan Quinn being there, the former defensive coordinator of the Seahawks, of yeah. course. So he kind of created He's that. He's been in two of the last three Super Bowls. Three of the last four, actually. Yeah, going back to uh, 48. That's right. So, yeah, and they're also great at rushing the passer. You saw the last couple weeks against Rodgers and Wilson, rushing them at a very consistent yeah. rate, forcing them out of the pocket. And that'll be a thing that'll hurt if Brady holds on to the ball. Those quick short throws can combat that really well, yeah. of course, unable to get at the passer because – Brady's definitely not nearly as mobile or doesn't try to be mobile as Rodgers or Wilson. So he's not going to be able to get away from them if and, they get to him. And no one's talking about Matt Ryan being mobile either. I mean, going back uh, to his rookie year, he did that a lot, and then it died down there. And then this year they brought it back into the, into the playbook. Um, and, you know, that's that's how they're beating teams. I mean, they finished 11-5. and five. I mean, they did win the NFC South but because it was good enough. But... Um, if New England, with New England's defense, their best defense, if they can, you know, stop Matt Ryan too, you know, being mobile like that, um, you know, Atlanta's going to be in trouble. You know, yeah. going back to that. Uh, but then Atlanta's defense, Vic Beasley, you know, he led the league in sacks. Um, if he can get to Brady and puts puts put puts those puts that pressure and hits on Brady, um, Brady, as long as he doesn't get hurt. Um, you know, uh, they're, he's still going to be in trouble. But if, if Brady gets hurt, they're screwed. Well, obviously, I mean, he is the superstar of the team. It's kind of hard to win without He is, but they sometimes. did win with Garoppolo and Jacoby Brissett this year. Early in the season. Early in the though. season, but, um, you know, they still won. So it ha- has to count for something. Yeah. Um, if you have anything <clears throat> else to add to the Falcons, let's go. Um, I'm let out. See. Yeah, I don't really um, have anything else for the Falcons. Um other than Kyle Shanahan, he's going to be getting a new new job. Uh, he's going to be hired by the San Francisco 49ers uh, as early as this weekend, Monday morning, more than likely, after the Super Bowl. Whether they win or lose, he's going to be going out to the San Francisco to be their new head coach. Um, they actually just hired John Lynch as their GM. A lot of people were surprised. It's unexpected. Um, <clears throat> but it goes to what the Denver Broncos did to John Elway. L.A. really didn't have any experience in the front office, and look what he's done. Um, so, uh, more more power, and hopefully, um, you know, something works out with John Lynch and the 49ers. You know, the 49ers are one of those uh, historical franchises in the NFL. They have five Super Bowl rings. Uh, the New England Patriots will be going for their fifth Super Bowl ring this Sunday, uh, as I said. Um, but I really, yeah, I don't have anything else about the Falcons. All right, now... I have some questions about the game, kind of what will happen in this game. All right. Uh, we'll start on the Patriots side again, because I have questions for both teams. First of all, can they stop the Falcons running backs, particularly in the pass game? Because this is what I mentioned. Like, yeah. They're good at stopping the run, and I'm sure they will be able to stop them pretty well running the ball. I mean, the problem with that is it's two different running backs, of course. They, yeah, exactly. So that part's a little bit maybe a mystery, but the passing game especially. Because it's such a variable thing and can really turn a game, possibly. Well, if Atlanta brings out both of them at the same time, obviously one of them, if they, and if they do run the screen, you know, one of them's going to get it and the other one's not, and you're going to have to stop the one that gets it. Um, and in that case, the defense might go the wrong side of the, wrong side of the field and go the opposite, opposite player. But I think New England's defense can stop. Um, can stop uh, um, their uh, their uh, running backs, but if they if they can't, New England's defense is in in trouble. For they're going to be uh, in for a long day um, because they're going to start running the ball. Then after that, and then it's just going to open up the play action, <clears throat> and then you got Julio Jones wide wide out, wide wide open downfield. So, um, we we'll want to see. I think they can, but who knows? Well, the only other thing I have to throw into that is like the attention that they're going to get Julio Jones. Will they be able to? Especially if they have both of them out there at the same time in a pass situation, they're going to have to focus on them. But also that focus on Julio Jones. Maybe they don't have enough coverage, enough good enough coverage at least to stop one or even both of those guys. Yeah, uh, I mean, you got Malcolm Butler. You know, he turned into a Super Bowl hero. Two years ago, with the we'll be on the game game saving uh, 
interception that clinched the Super Bowl against the Seahawks when they should have ran the ball. Um, yeah, he will be on Julio, uh, but uh, we'll have to see. Uh, next for the Patriots, will another <laughs> slow start mean some trouble for them? Because they had some slow starts here in this postseason. They've been doing their work in the second half more, more than not. So they've been in close games here against they Houston have. and Pittsburgh as well. But uh, then the second, second half, they second pull, half away. They pull away. But yeah. the problem is, it's like, will they be unable to come back if the Falcons do get up? If the Falcons are up and they have a slow start, the Patriots do offensively, will they be able to come back? You know, because then they're going to have to pass it more. They're going to have to try to make yeah. maybe take bigger shots on the field that opens up the pass rush mm-hmm. of the Falcons. So that's that's why I always say, if you start out running the ball, if you well, if you can run the ball the whole entire game, um, you know, without getting you know, a penalty called back on you or the defense stopping you, you know, it's going to open up that play action to those three wide receivers that they have. Uh, but uh, if, I mean, if they do start out slow, they start out slow. I mean, everybody starts out slow one time or another. Uh, and as you said, they got to make some plays in the second half as they've done in the playoffs. But um, if they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. But I really, I really don't know what to say. All right. And then finally for the Patriots, at least that I've written down, who on offense is going to rise? Because it seems like, in the postseason especially, there's one guy on offense yeah. for the Patriots that shows up and just takes over a game, it seems and like. We've we'll seen be... Blunt do it numerous times yeah. in the past. Last week, or in Two the championship field. game, it was Kogan. Yeah. And the week before that, it was Lewis. So there seems like a guy, new guy each time in the postseason for yeah. the Patriots that steps up, has a huge game, and is ultimately a difference in a game yeah. for the Patriots. I mean, Julian Edelman, he might be double-covered. I don't know. I don't know the Legion of Boom 2.0, as you call him. A lot of people are calling him, you know, Atlanta secondary. I don't know what defense, for that matter. I don't know what they're going to do. Um, no one's really been talking about him, though, you know, Edelman. Uh, you know, it's all been on Hogan. It's it, And, you know, they'll probably go double cover him then. Um, you know, who's the other wide receiver they have? Amendola. Yeah, Danny Amendola. Um, you know, a lot like Edelman, a lot like Hogan as well. You know, they're all about, all three of those guys all, are... all about the same skill level. Same skill level, uh, same size. Even yeah. They're all slot type guys. Um, you know, they're like that Wes Welker type. Uh, but I, I have to say Edelman because no one's been talking about him lately. But you can't you can't forget about one of their running backs and James White because he's like their third running back, their third, their third go-to guy. Um, he really hasn't done anything a whole lot lately. Uh, so I'd say Edelman and James White, um, you know, would be those two guys to step up in Super Bowl on Sunday. All right. The Falcon side of things, we've <laughs> already brought this up, but how focused will Kyle Shanahan be in this game? Oh, knowing he'll, that he'll be, he'll be locked in. Well, knowing that tomorrow, the next day, he's going to have to go to San Francisco, a waning franchise at the moment who hasn't been very good lately. Yeah. With no like no quarterback to speak of really in San Francisco as well, yeah. needing to build up this team, at make the them moment, better. Yeah. yeah. So how focused will he be in this game? It's kind of a question. Like, I think will that be a factor. I think he's going to be locked in. A lot of people are going to say it was a factor if Atlanta loses, uh, because you've seen that happen in the past. You know, coaches moving on, or you know, if something you know came up like two weeks ago, somebody pulled the damn fire alarm in the Steelers hotel leading up to the game. Uh, and saying that the Steelers didn't get enough sleep then. That's why they played like they did. They didn't. Ex- exactly. They're called excuses. Um, he'll be he'll be locked in 100%. He knows um, what it's like uh, being in a Super Bowl situation. His dad, Mike Shanahan, you know, he coached the Broncos there for a little bit. Um, so I, he's going to be locked in 100% to answer your question. All right. Um, I don't think I don't think I don't think he's going to have any trouble now. If they you know call a wrong play, oh, he should have done this, he should have done that. Then you know maybe, but it just depends on the point in the game, you know things like that. Yeah. The inexperience factor in this game. How much will that play a factor? How much will that pressure of that Super Bowl? Maybe the jitters of being in the Super yeah. Bowl because it's the first for almost everyone on that team, pretty much. How much will that play into the performance of the Atlanta Falcons? We don't know. Well, same thing with the entire. Patriots too. There's only about, like I said, twenty players coming back from two years ago. Uh, so it just shows you, you know, how many players get cut, traded, uh, you know, have retired, you know, and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, since then, uh, so it, really, it's on both sides. So you don't know if you know those players are gonna, you know, once they hit the spotlight, if they're gonna shine or not. 
But I think I think the Eddie experience isn't gonna hurt either one of them at all because Dan Quinn knows what it's like to be in this situation as well. He's been a coordinator under Pete Carroll. He played in two Super Bowls. Um, so he'll have his guys ready. And then, uh, uh, I mean, a lot of these guys, too, on both sides of the ball, have played in big games in college. Uh, you know, so they know what it's like, you know, to play, like, in a big bowl game or a national championship game. National championship game ain't no so, Super Bowl. I understand that, but, you know, um, you know, still, they, I don't, I don't think they'll be rattled at all and, I think we're, I think we're gonna have a, be on uh, tap for a good game on Sunday. Not really a question that needs an answer because it's something you're not gonna really know until game time. Exactly, exactly. It's not, exactly. It's not a question that you can really answer at this time. That's what all these questions are really. You're yeah. not gonna really know until either during the game or after the game, maybe. Yeah. So it's they're kind of more of just like what will happen. It's just like a theoretical question mm-hmm. almost. And then finally. Can those other receivers that you mentioned, like Gabriel and Sanu, step up if Julio is silenced and taken out of the game? I think Sanu can because he did it in uh, Cincinnati with, uh, when he had A.J. Green. and um, Oh, who's the other guy that plays in Detroit now? Um, Marvin Jones. Yeah, Marvin Jones. So you had your three wide receivers there. He has his three wide receivers here. He had to do the same thing in Cincinnati to A.J. Green. He's doing with uh, with Jones now in Atlanta. So... Um, I think he would be able to. Now, Gabriel, he might be a a, a playmaker, a, a factor on special teams as well if they put him back there. Um, we'll have to see about that. Um, but I think I think I think Sanu has a better chance over Gabriel to do something because Sanu's been in this situation before um, his whole entire career in the NFL. Uh, Gabriel, he played for the Browns, so the Browns are the Browns. Also forgot about tight end Toilolo as well. Yeah, he he might step up. Uh, I mean, you go back to the Patriots. Bennett, he as you said, he's really a number one guy anywhere he goes. Um, and I agree with that. Uh, he might he might be making some plays. Uh, I want to be surprised if there's a you know a kick return for a touchdown, a punt return for a touchdown, you know, a, a, an interception or a fumble return for a touchdown on defense, something. Uh, you know, that can change the game in a matter of seconds. Yeah, because yeah, we've seen that happen in the Super Bowl before. Uh, and once it happens one time, you sure as hell know it's going to happen again, just a matter of when. Yeah. All right. Now it's time for us to pick this game. Okay. We've done us preview it now. Let's, let's get into who we think is going to win this game. Um, I know we discussed it last week and off – Camera, we did agree. We did, we did agree. I, I came, I came to my senses. We did agree that in the in the whole like pick stuff that we're doing, yeah. record wise, I win, and well, if I win, you don't have the same team as I do, obviously. Yeah. Then I would win a tiebreaker because it would be tied record wise. Yes, I would, would. win a tiebreaker. Um, it's like ninety three and something or ninety two and something. Yeah, and I don't. Know I, I think it was. Numbers off head. I don't remember exactly what I thought the tiebreaker was. Playoff record or just Super Bowl, just winning. The Super well, Bowl it's it's our playoff record. I went. We both had the same records in the um, uh, wild card and the divisional. Both went three and one, and then come the championship Sunday two weeks ago, uh, he picked both teams right. I picked both teams wrong, so he went two and zero. Oh, I went zero oh and two. That bring our that brought our records uh, to one game apart from each other, and now we've got one game left. Now we could have picked the Pro Bowl. The Pro Bowl is a Pro Bowl, though. Uh, it's not the Super Bowl. Um, so, with the one game in between us, we decided, you know, if he wins, if he pick, if the, you might as well say who you're picking then. Well, no, we'll, we'll get into it. Oh, all right. Well, if he if he if he gets his team right, um, he'll be tied with me because I'm picking the other team. Um, We'll both be tied, and then he'll he'd have a better record in the playoffs, and then he'd win a tiebreaker. All right. Long story short. Yeah. So let's get into it. We'll start with you. Who's win Super Bowl Fifty One? The Atlanta say. Falcons. Atlanta Falcons. Yes. All right. Why? Um, because I hate the Patriots and I hate Tom Brady. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Anything apart? From um. That? Well, now, well, I think as I said earlier, if if New England can stop both both of Freeman and Coleman, if they can only stop one of them. I think they still might be in trouble because um, who knows if they stop the one on you know in the past game, that guy he might be running the ball better than you know the other guy. So um, 
and it opens that play action pass. As I said, they got the they got all those weapons. They got the number one defense. I know I always state defense wins championships, but um, the Atlanta Falcons. I think they're I think they're poised to win their first Super Bowl in franchise history. As I said, it's the first time in eighteen years that they're going back to the Super Bowl. Uh, it was actually eighteen years to the day yesterday that they lost to the Denver Broncos in Super Bowl thirty three. Um, so. I think the Atlanta Falcons will win now. If the Patriots win, they win. You know, so be it. I'm not gonna be really mad. Um, <clears throat> I will be mad that uh, you beat me, though. But um, that is what it is. I can't do anything about that. I mean, I could have picked some games differently during the regular season, but that's my own fault. Um, Belichick and Brady—they're gonna go down as maybe the best head coach and quarterback duo in NFL history. Um, Belichick's already surpassed Tom Landry and Don Shola for most uh, most Super Bowl appearances as a head coach. Uh, he will, if the Patriots win, win his fifth Super Bowl title as a head coach. Brady as well as a player. Um, so I, I really won't be mad if they win. You know, all credit to them then. You know, they deserve it. But uh, the Atlanta Falcons, I think they're going to Super Bowl 51 on Sunday from Houston, Texas. All right. Actually, the second time Houston hosted the Super Bowl. In NRG slash Reliance Stadium is what it was formerly called, third time in the city's history. So, uh, and the last time the Super Bowl was in Houston, the Patriots played the Carolina Panthers, a team from the NFC South. All right, that's what they are again. All right, I got the Patriots win not only <coughs> because it'll win the whole picks thing for me, yeah. if I am correct, but also I mean just looking at the stuff I have written down and stuff, I feel like the Patriots match up a little too well against the Falcons. I feel like the Patriots have well, the right I, on for- offense. Defense or just in general? In general. They in just general, match up okay. too well, I think. And playoffs is all about matchups in most of the time, you know. So, but looking at it, I think they match up a little too well. And here's why, almost. <laughs> but um, the run defense, of course, is the best in the NFL. I think they're going to be able to stop the two-headed running backs. I don't think it really matters whether it's Freeman or Coleman. They're going to be able to stop them no matter what. Taking away the best receiver in Julio Jones, they're going to be able to do that. It's shown time and time again they're able to do that on a consistent basis. Yeah. I don't think Julio's going to have too much space to work with unless it's a zone offense or defense, rather. So I think he's going to be kind of relatively taking out. I'm, just, I'm not going to say he's going to get shut down, not have anything, no contribution to the game at all. He's not going to be able to make any big plays, I don't think, though, and make any solid contributions to a victory for the Falcons in the end. Uh, that quick short throws, I think, combats the Falcons' pass rush too well. The Falcons will not be unable to get at Tom Brady uh, efficiently and effectively like they have been the last couple weeks against the Seahawks and the Packers in their two playoff games so far. That Swiss Army offense is going to be hard to stop no matter what Mm -hmm. for such a young defense that is on the rise for sure and has been showing really great signs of being elite this season, I would Mm -hmm. say. And then the technically sound, the Patriots being so technically sound defensively and even offensively, you can go as far as to say, I yeah. think they don't make too many mistakes. They do what they're told, and they do it well. I think it's going to be just... They're too rock solid, I think. And the Falcons, they don't make too many mistakes. They might make a mistake here in this game. They did make mistakes, actually, in the title game against yeah. the Packers. The, ca- the <clears> Packers <throat> weren't able to capitalize. Patriots, I think, maybe capitalize on a few errors by the Falcons, possibly from jitters, possibly from the pressure. And I think they win this game and win the fifth Super Bowl franchise history, fifth for Brady and Belichick era. Yeah. Do you have a final score? Final score? You might as well do final scores. Because, um, you know, what if it comes down? I mean, it's a super win one game apart, but, yeah. you know, other situations, sometimes yeah. a final score will uh, make it better in the end. Uh, final score, I'm going to go higher scoring. Um, 31-24 Patriots. All right. Uh, I believe the over-under is like 58 uh, and then the Patriots are a three-point favorite at the moment. I wouldn't be surprised if the games would pick them come Sunday because you know, both these teams are just, you know, that number one offense versus number one defense. I'm going to go uh, 34-20 uh, Atlanta. As I said, uh, I'm picking the Falcons. Uh, second time they've gone to the Super Bowl, looking for their first Super Bowl win. Hopefully they get it. Uh, what other facts do I have about Super Bowl? Uh, I think we said the Patriots are going to their ninth Super Bowl. You know, they're four and four, get the win, they're get their fifth, they'll be over the five hundred hump. Um actually between the Patriots and Falcons, the Patriots own a seven to six win loss record. Um 
The last time Atlanta defeated New England was in 1998. The last time the Atlanta Falcons went to the Super Bowl. Uh, so we'll have to see if the Falcons can finally dethrone the Patriots uh, for the first win since 1998 when they went to the Super Bowl. As we said, the Super Bowl's on Fox, 6.30 on Sunday. Uh, should start at 6.42, according to me. You said quarter till 7, so 6.45. Um, Joe Buck, Troy Aikman on the call. Uh, Aaron Andrews uh, actually just uh, had cancer. No one knew about it until she came out and said it. Uh, she actually does not have it anymore, so thank God about that. Uh, and then Chris Myers does a lot of NASCAR coverage for Fox. Uh, got the Daytona 500 coming up in a couple weeks. We'll get back from the NASCAR picks uh, then. Um, and then uh, when the Super Bowl was on Fox, the Patriots played in, it in Super Bowl 36, 39, and 42. They won two of those. The other one, as you said, they have four wins in, in the Super Bowl against uh, teams not named the New York Giants. Their two, their two losses were the New York Giants in Super Bowl 42 and 46. Um, Luke Bryan, country music singer, singing the national anthem. And then Lady Gaga's doing the halftime show. Uh, should be good, but... Uh, halftime show is the piss break. Well, I always watch halftime show. Uh, if it's somebody of... Big name, which Super Bowl tries to get a big name to play the Super Bowl halftime show. It never sounds any good. Uh, hardly. Well, it just, it just depends. Can't even hear the people. I mean, sometimes they might be lip singing. They, you know. They all, yes, they. I mean, obviously they do. That's well, just how pop music is. Well, you know, uh, Mariah Carey does. You know, going back to New Year's <laughs> Eve, um, that was awful. Uh, but I mean, we'll have to see. You know how that halftime show goes. She said she wanted to perform it from the top of the stadium. Now, if the NFL is going to allow her to do that, Not true. I doubt it, but um, we'll have to see. So, yeah, Super Bowl is on Sunday, 6 30 on Fox. Got the Patriots, Falcons. Uh, a good matchup, should be one hell of a game. Um, do you have anything else to say? Just that our question of the week this week is, in fact, who's yeah. going to win the Super Bowl? So who's going to win Super Bowl 50? Patriots, Falcons, let us Super know. Super Bowl 51. 51, yes. Thank you. Uh, Super Bowl 51, who's going to win that? Let us know. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll have a post here on Facebook uh, eventually when we're done here. Um, uh, and over on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, also have a question of the day today. Uh, hockey game tonight, Bruins, Capitals. I'm taking the Boston Bruins. Who do you take? Uh, Capitals are at home. Yes. yes, they are. They didn't lose in the month of January. They continue that now. All right. Maybe February. Um, and then I totally forgot that Kansas was playing Baylor tonight, too. That could have been a question of the day because it's a two versus three matchup. Well, um, win. It's so, Lawrence. huh? It's in Lawrence. Kansas is going to win. All right. Uh, so he's taking Kansas. I'll take, I'll take Kansas as well. That that's not a question of the day, but it's uh, it's a game that's on tonight. What else do I have here? Yeah, just like us here on Facebook, follow us on Twitter uh, and Instagram at ATGL16. Follow me on Twitter uh, at Cohen Luke 96 Follow him at Twitter on Twitter at CMAs14. Uh, Buy our merchandise too. Um, get a hold of, get a hold of us for that, um, and uh, let us know who you think is going to win Super Bowl 51 on Sunday from uh, Houston, Texas, and we'll see you next week.